Although female genital mutilation was outlawed in Uganda in 2009 and sensitization against the practice has been going on, news in Kenyan media last weekend indicated that mature married Ugandan women are now crossing into Kenya to get circumcised. New Vision TV explores what could be driving women who had survived the cruel knife to go looking for it in another country. We also expose the new sophisticated ways it is done right under the government's nose in the most unlikely places. The cruelest custom inflicted on women in several countries is the permanent sexual disability by cutting out the most sensitive part of her genitalia, the clitoris. This leaves her sexually unfeeling because what is supposed to be the most tender part instead becomes a tough scar that has no sensation whatsoever. Moreover, sex becomes a painful act and even worse, she suffers repeated infections, can get terrible conditions like fistula and in many cases fails to retain urine. And these conditions are permanent until she dies, if she is lucky not to die during the circumcision, as many do. The victims also have very difficult deliveries and their babies often die due to prolonged labor. This female genital mutilation is carried out using crude sharp objects by traditional surgeons. In Uganda, it is practiced by the Sabini around Kapchora and some communities in Karamoja as well as by migrant Somalis. In Uganda, FGM was fought by different activists until it was outlawed by parliament in December 2009. Anybody found guilty of circumcising a girl is liable to 10 years imprisonment, while anyone who abets the exercise can be imprisoned for about 5 years. And should it result into death, disability or cause HIV infection, then the perpetrator is liable to life imprisonment. Uganda's strongest anti-FGM warriors include Parliament Speaker Rebecca Kadaga, who has over the years fought it legislatively and enlisted President Museveni in the anti-FGM fight. The other outstanding warrior is Minister for General Duties, Mary Karoro Krut, Uganda's literature giant, who two years ago also wrote a revolting book. The switch that outlines the process and effects of FGM when the figurative switch is turned off permanently. So why are women who survived the knife sneaking away to get cut even after having babies and testing the bliss of marriage or conjugation? Apparently, while the overt public sensation by government, local leaders, development partners and NGOs has been going on, the traditionalists went underground and also intensify the stigmatization of women who survived the knife as incomplete. Traditionally, a woman who was not circumcised was suspected of infidelity since she could enjoy sex. So FGM continued underground and the law enforcement tightened. The women who feared traditional stigma started finding their way to Kenya where the practice, though outlawed, is still carried out by the Sabinia's cousins, the Kalenjini. When a woman is aroused using the clitoris, the whole organ becomes, attracts blood into it, becomes bigger, and, and it allows the vaginal walls and the other organs to release replication, which makes sex very easy and very enjoy, enjoyable for a woman. Now without it, all that is missing. What remains, the woman has got three places that can cause arousal. It's the clitoris, the G-spot, and the vaginal wall stimulation. And the other three are stimulated after penetration. So it means without the clitoris, the woman will feel pain at the beginning of sex. And then the stimulation will still not be as much because the integral part where the nerves were supposed to pick it from are not there. But there are even most in instant sophisticated ways of perpetrating FGM. They're actually horrendous. It is strongly suspected that FGM is now conducted in modern maternity facilities where some midwives hailing from female circumcising communities are either paid or simply convinced to cut two types of victims. A woman who's delivering can be cut under the guise of speeding up a difficult delivery. But another gross human rights abuse is the cutting of baby girls whose parents so ask the campaigns to them to resist circumcision as they approach puberty come more than a decade late. 
Besides the terrible health hazards, what do the victims of FGM miss that other women get? Where it is cut, a scar remains. And that scar is zero elasticity. So when during childbirth, when the vagina and the vulva needs to expand to allow the head of the baby to come, that place remains strictured because it is a scar. It cannot expand. And that brings risks, high risks of fistula, high risks of stillbirth, and also uh, risks of caesarean birth. So women who are circumcised tend to need hospital care during childbirth because there is that scar that stops a wide expansion. And then the risk of fistula, which again complicates the whole problem. As the tradition is for new ways of perpetrating FGM, will the authorities keep up so as to save our women from this dangerous lifelong disability?